So a couple of themes running through the show today. We've already spoken about surviving by living on termites, which, <laughs> let's face it... Um, it's very impressive. I was, I was impressed. And, uh, of course, now we've been talking about water. and so we're, we're, we're very important people on the show today. I know. There's associate professors and chairmen and all sorts of things going on. This next segment, though, if you're a homeowner or you're considering get, getting into the house market, or, in fact, I think it's really important for everybody to be aware of mm -hmm. our little pests that we have around the place, so if you spot them, you can help to eradicate them. Today we're going to be talking about the European house borer, and uh, as the name suggests, it likes eating where you like to live. Now, we've got another associate professor in, this one from Edith Cowan University, Dr Adam Ozerin joins us this morning, and Danica Collins from the EHB Response, well, Centre, your Response Technical Officer, right. talking about ways of how we going to find these borers and get rid of them forever hopefully. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. First of all I guess let's start off uh, by defining our terms. Exactly Danica what is a European house borer? Well European house borer or EHB is a destructive pest of pine timber. Um, it's untreated seasoned pine. Um, its larva causes all the damage. Uh, feeds away at the wood forming all these tunnels and galleries. Um, the adult is a beetle which doesn't live for very long and it's non-destructive. So it's the larva that we're, that we're looking out for. And so why are they a problem? I mean, what's, mm. why should Western Australians be concerned about these little EHBs? Well, because um, it eats pine timber. So, yeah, and that's, that's a massive problem because our um, timber industry, uh, pine timber industry, is it's quite large. So. But is this only insertion areas in WA? It's only found in the Perth metro area, okay. in the greater Perth metro area. Um, we've managed to confine it to that, to that area, which is... So I imagine they're, an, mm -hmm. I gather, gather they're an imported pest, I'm just guessing that from the name. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> would, they have, would they have arrived out here with the first fleet or is, you know, recent years or has there been any, uh, any indication as to how long they've been around here for? We're not too sure. It was first detected in 2004. Okay, so, oh, so fairly recent sort of a problem? Well, fairly, well, fairly recent find. Fairly recently yeah. found problem. So obviously uh, finding the pest is half the problem uh, towards solving, you know, mm. towards uh, eradication or at least minimalisation mm. of their effects. How on earth do you find these little things? And, you know, obviously what problems have you come up with trying to track them down? Yeah, it's very difficult to detect the larva as they live within the wood and are very well hidden. Um, so we, um, we do ask members of the public to keep an eye out um, as the as the larva has, has fed enough and pupated and leaves the wood, it leaves this um, distinctive exit hole. So we ask people to look out for that. Mm -hmm. Also to listen for any scraping noises as the larva feeds, makes quite a distinctive um, sort of scratching noise as it's feeding away oh, in the wood. Right. So we ask people to, if they spot anything um, suspicious, to call our hotline. And that's so what that's they look like? Like, they were probably about that big, half that size? Yeah, the, um, that size? the adults are between one to two centimetres long. Mm -hmm. So they, um, the adults are quite small. The larva can be tiny though, so they're very yeah. difficult to detect. Distinctive so. little holes, obviously the boring factor. And uh, I was just reading through the notes earlier on. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if you're looking for these little holes, five to ten mil, going with the grain. Going along with the grain, absolutely. Yeah. Grain. So obviously that's, uh, that, that's obviously specific to this particular pest or is it just a good indication that it's them? It's a good thing to look out for in, in pine timber. Okay. And we, yeah, we do ask members of the public too, if they have any pine on their property, to have a look out for it. Yeah. So no. how do you detect them then? Is there like certain tools and stuff you use? Yeah, well what, we're, what we've um, done at the moment is in affected areas, removed all host material, um, so any sort of dead pine trees or anything like that, and replaced um, the host material with a trap pole, which is essentially a pine log. Mm. And um, then sort of if there's any uh, beetles left in the area, then they'll be attracted to, to the trap poles. Uh -huh. Mm, and the old um, sacrificial anode type of theory. Exactly, yeah. yeah beautiful. But um, you find the larva in these trap holes also po poses a problem. So the larva can be very small and also um, we're, we're catching them before the adults have a chance to emerge and, right. and continue the life cycle. So for finding um, the larva in these trap holes, we're combined with um, Edith Cowan University in using acoustic methods mm -hmm. um, to detect these these chewing noises that the, that the larva makes. Well, let's throw it over then. So, uh, Associate Professor Adam Osserin. So, we found out from the Department of Agriculture and Food that uh, they're not a very good thing to have around mm. the place. Mm -hmm. Over the ECU with detection and, uh, and stomping these little critters. So, acoustic. Now, I've, I've one of the ways to help stop a house borer is to listen out for scraping sounds. Mm. Now, what yep. confuses me though is if you, you've got your little stethoscope or whatever listening into the wall and you can hear the scratching and scraping, how on earth do you know it's these fellows and not someone a little bit different? That's a good question. In fact, what we have developed is a system that uh, in a smart way recognises the noise, specific noise. Every insect has its own specific mm -hmm. noise. So we can digitise this noise and recognise it. 
we, we store it in, in on site on the system. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later. But we will be able to recognize specifically that this is the EHP and not another uh, not the best. So how do you help to find them then? Well, once we detect them, what, what we want to know is to detect the noise, specific noise, and then communicate it to, to DAFWA and to the Department of uh, Agriculture and, and Food. And they would be able to localize and know where the, the pest is, which, which tree actually, or which house, or where, where it is local, uh, located precisely what time and what, which day it was detected. So is it just a matter of like putting your ear to a pole or is there other equipment that you use or that people can use? It's exactly like, like having someone continuously day and night putting their ear oh. on the pole but just able to recognise specifically this noise and not any yes. other noise. So it could be something else but we'd, the ear would not react. It would react only for this specific noise and it will tell you that this is an EHP. Excellent. Right. So uh, is, this a, is this a new technology developed here in WA by ECU or have you sort of been... We are working actually, we are working on, on this technology to develop, it, to develop it specifically for this application but it could be generalised to other applications but mm. specifically for this topic here we are developing a, a smart ear that would be able to recognise this noise. So what's the intention then then? So obviously you've done your acoustic profile, would you then leave this uh, acquisition equipment on site in, in, a, in an area where the, there's pine trees for example or you know, yeah, what, what were the applications? Yeah, I mean, it depends be? where, where, the, where the, the, uh, the suspected area is. We would place some of these. In fact there's going to be tiny ears. You can imagine mm. tiny ears. I have brought something here. Just going to take tiny out of my ears. pocket. Ah. This system here, it it's, would look like that in fact. It's, it's something that would leave on the... So on the cable tie on the tree? Actually it's, it's going to be wireless. So we just leave it on the tree for a year will have a, a battery and it will have a very low power. Do you want to uh, hold it to yeah. Okay. Uh, to you? Special way of holding it. You Please give it, it get back it to me. This is the right. I have now. <laughs> so, um, okay, so obviously we covered the question about other insects making noise and things, so the acoustic profile is fairly specific for each, yep. each little critter. Um, so what about, uh, well, when, when would we expect to see it actually in action out there uh, protecting our pine? Oh. We are developing this. This is, this is a, just to show you an idea of how it would, look like. it would look like. We are developing the electronics inside it. In fact, there's uh, very sophisticated electronics in, inside this system here. We are developing this, uh, this system in collaboration with the Department of Agriculture at, at, at ECU. Once we have a, uh, an electronic uh, samples or prototype ready, we will put them on, on, uh, on some trees, in fact, sites that the department will tell us where to put them. They are going to be ready roughly in, in a few months and uh, the, the prototype I'm talking about and then mm. once they are available we will put them uh, Now my lateral mm. thinking brain suggests that if you can do this for EHBs you'd probably be able to then turn around and sort of yeah. make a slightly different map for termites or a slightly different absolutely, map Absolutely, yes, yeah? absolutely. If we have a specific uh, signature for the termites for instance we will be able to program this system and convert yeah. them into termites. Yeah. Very, very famous uh, mm. Iranian, oh, is he Iranian? Noam Gavrieli, his name is, and he's a legend in the world of acoustics, and he's developed a system for telling if kids are having asthma attacks or not. It's so there you go. So acoustics is obviously a very interesting world, and good to see that ECU at the forefront of, uh, of realistic and real-life applications for this technology. Exactly. Yes. Good so stuff. So is there a, uh, where people are concerned, um, yep, is there a website and a, you know, an address that they can go to? Bring up this whole screen yep. right now. Watch this. There we go. Wow. How's that? <laughs> so if you'd like to uh, do your bit to protect yourself, but of course the wider community as well, get online and, and help stop the European house borer. Or EHB, which is a lot quicker EHB, to say. Is <laughs> <laughs> Danika, thank you for telling us about these little pests we haven't really heard much about. And uh, Dr. Osserin, thanks for thank pointing you. us in the right direction and letting thank us know you. that there's something being done. And I'm sure there's a lot of uh, insurance companies and builders and homeowners out there very happy to hear as well. Just very, very quickly, treated pine, not a problem? Not a problem. No. All right then, so make sure if you're using pine, particularly in a construction environment, make sure it's treated. There's a lot more information, go to wakeupwa.com.au, follow the links to ECU and uh, find out what's being done to help stop this problem in the future. Once again, thanks for joining us. Thank we you. need to go to a quick break, however. You've got 90 seconds. We'll see you right back here just after this.